Hello Guardians, my name is Hyrex and in this video I'm going to show you my two hunter builds that I am using in Season 16, Season of the Risen. So the first build I'm going to show you is a build for solo things. So for example, solo flawless dungeons, preservation missions and other things like that. And the second build I'm going to show you in this video will be a team focused burst damage oriented build that I really like to play in raids and strikes and things like that. But before I'm talking too much about those builds, let's get right into the first build. So the first build I'm using is the always invisible hunter. Just because I like being always invisible in solo flawless dungeons, this is the way I solo flawless the prophecy dungeon and the shattered throne in the dreaming city because it is just so easy i'm always invisible i have a lot of other stuff i can use i am even able to do a lot of damage with this build so yeah let's get right into what i'm using on this build so the first aspect I'm using on this build is Stylish Executioner because defeating a weakened, suppressed or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. After performing a Stylish Execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens a target. So as you can see already, those two aspects are working together really really well, especially when you have high mobility like I do. I'm on 85, I know it could be better, but I can pretty much just dodge all the time and melee somebody and I'm always invisible because the cooldown will allow me to just melee somebody, turn invisible and afterwards I can just dodge and then I can melee somebody, get invisible again and I got my dodge back by that time so I can be pretty much invisible all the time if I play it right. So this is why I'm calling this the solo night circuit build because well you see on screen that I'm always invisible and that is the biggest problem because your teammates will always get the attention of the enemy, you will always be invisible and it's just not nice for your teammates. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the fragments I'm using in this build because that's also important. After that we're going to get into what weapons I'm using and also what mods I'm using on the armor. So since I'm using those two aspects I have the full potential of four fragments total I can use. And the first fragment I'm using of those four is the echo of remnants void fragment. Your lingering grenade effects void text grenade, void wall, void spike and axiom balls have increased duration. So the grenade I'm using on this build is the vortex grenade so it has increased duration through this fragment and this is just great because if you have a bigger group of adds you can clear with that it is just awesome because the vortex grenade pulls all the enemies together and then just does a lot of damage which is good so it's increased even if it's an orange buy it will most likely die through this grenade. So the next void fragment I'm using is the echo of reprisal fragment. This is great because final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy. This is awesome because I'm always in the enemy i'm always in big groups of enemy with this build so it's just great i get my super back very very fast so the key void fragment that you want to have on this build is echo of persistence void buffs applied to you invisibility overshield and devour have increased duration and the invisibility point is very very important because it jumps up from 6 seconds to 11 seconds but let's get into the fourth and final fragment i am using on this build and the last fragment would be echo of domineering after suppressing a target you gain greatly increased mobility for a short duration and your equipped weapon is reloaded from reserves this is a fragment that you don't need to technically but it's just great to have because we're going to get into the weapons I'm using and also the mods I'm using so it will make more sense later on but it is great if you can suppress a target you will get more mobility which will make you get your dodge back faster and it will also reload your equipped weapon from your reserves so that is just great in total for this build but that would be it for the aspects and fragments I'm using on this build so let's get right into what mods I'm using on my armor and what weapons I'm pairing this build with so let's talk about what is making this build work so well. So on my cloak I'm using suppressing glaive. Damaging combatants with your glaive suppresses them preventing them from using abilities for a short time. This is just super to pair with any kind of glaive. You can use the exotic hunter glaive. You can even use the normal enigma glaive or lubre's ruin out of the raid. So that mod and the glaives just makes this build so well rounded because I'm just suppressing enemies with the glaive and well after that I'm getting invisible. So yeah it is just great. It just works so well but let's talk about the rest of the mods I'm having on my armor. 
so my cloak is on stasis because I can use the ability kickstart mod but other than that I just got a mobility increase by 10 and volatile flow because volatile flow is just good I can proc it with the normal enigma glaive on any kind of enemy when I shoot them it's just a straight up damage increase and the explosion is just doing a lot of damage so on my shoes I'm either using the stompies just because stompies are in general good these dieter scales or my normal shoes all three have powerful friends two invigoration mods and one 10 set increase for mobility and then on my chest armor I'm using a 10 stat increase for mobility thermal shock plating one melee damage resistance because I'm always in the melee range of enemies so if I'm just not invisible right now and for example my invisibility runs out I am in the enemies and they will punch me so melee damage resistance is very well also I'm using reaping wall makers so every time I'm dodged and I'm gonna kill something I'm just gonna make a elemental well with my subclass and that just plays into volatile flow and font of might and things like that I'm also playing on my armor so on my arms I'm playing a 10 stat increase for mobility overloaded auto and SMG unstoppable glaive and font of might on my helmet I'm just playing a 10 stat increase then also a harmonic siphon and a wall of utility wall of utility allows me whenever I pick up an elemental well I will get some of my ability energy back so all in all this build is just great so I'm just killing stuff I'm just gonna dodge get a elemental well after a kill I'm gonna get some of my ability back and I'm gonna get volatile flow and fun of my so I'm dealing more damage with my void glaive I'm just shooting enemies they will explode that deals more damage I'm getting invisible after it because I'm suppressing them when they explode and things like that it's just it's just all in all a always invisible build which is just super good but let's get right into the second build for this video today so the next build I am going to show you is a burst damage build for my hunter that I really like to play in raids and other hard activities so as with the first build let's get right into aspects and fragments I am using on this build so the first aspect I'm using on this build is Trapper's Ambush. Activate Quickfall to spend your melee charge and dive to the ground, creating a large smoke cloud on impact which then dissipates. Targets caught in the cloud are weakened and allies are made invisible. Your smoke bomb makes nearby allies invisible when it attaches to nearby surfaces or targets. So that aspect is just great because I can make my allies invisible and it's just good so in case I'm gonna rest somebody I can just jump up real quick, press X and they're invisible immediately after they got rest so it is just super in case somebody is out there and is not really in a good place to get revived. So the second void aspect I'm playing on on this build is the vanishing step aspect because it is just great in case I want to reload my weapon I'm playing this with my dodge I can just dodge and my weapon is reloaded and I'm also invisible so that is really great but let's get into the fragments I'm using on this build and yet again the first fragment I'm playing is the echo of remnants because I like my vortex grenade to have some more duration because the second fragment I'm playing is the echo of undermining your void grenades weaken targets so echo of remnants will increase the duration of my vortex grenade and echo of undermining will weaken those targets for 15% more damage so this is just great because I can just throw my grenade at a major enemy if I need to kill it real quick and it gets more damage even for damage phases if you don't have divinity anymore or don't have a tether you can just throw it at the boss and all your team members will do more damage and last but not least I'm playing echo of starvation which will grant me devour whenever I will pick up an orb of power which will just play into this build perfectly but let's get into the mods and the weapons I'm playing on this build. So first of all, for the mods, on my cloak, I'm playing a mobility stat increase by 10, then also ability kickstart and devouring deaths. So what does devouring deaths do? Whenever I'm casting my void super while I'm critically wounded or benefiting from devour, I will get more damage with that super. That is just great because with this build, I will be always creating orbs. I will always be picking up orbs and that will just always get me devour. And even if I'm critically wounded in a boss fight, I will also deal more damage. And the last mod I'm playing on my hunter cloak is Vital Flow so I can deal more damage to enemies because of the explosions and I can clear entire rooms in just seconds because of the volatile explosions I will do with my funnel web. So the exotic armor of choice on this build is the Star Eater Scales exotic leg armor with the perk Feast of Light. You gain additional supercharge from orbs of power you pick up. 
while your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power will overcharge your super, causing you to gain a burst of healing at when cast and a bonus to your super damage. At maximum overcharge, you will also gain a super shield. This stacks up to 8 and has the highest damage potential on 8 stacks. The mods I'm using on my strategy scales are a mobility mod for plus 10 mobility and invigoration mod for my powerful friends mod to proc the plus 20 mobility. On my chest armor, I'm playing a mobility stat increase for 10 points, the thermal shock plating from the artifacts and also melee damage resistance. And last but not least for my class mod, I'm using a reaping well maker. This will make me dodge and will give me an elemental well after I'm killing somebody when I just dodged. On my gauntlets, I'm just playing a stat increase for 10 mobility, then I'm also playing a rocket launcher loader, but you can play whatever loader you want, and then I'm also playing fun of might, which is super because I'm picking up a lot of orbs after dodging, so I'm just having fun of might and volatile flow procced every well that I'm picking up. And on my helmet, I'm playing a plus 10 stat increase for mobility, then also void siphon, so my void weapons will create orbs of light, which is really important for this build, and also a harmonic siphon, so whenever I do a kill with void weapons, I will get an orb, and last but not least, well of utility, so whenever I pick up a well, I will get my ability energy back way faster than normal. So for my weapons of choice on this build, I'm playing Izanagi's Burden, then the Funnel Web for Ad Clear, and the Palmyra B for boss damage with the Izanagis together, and on my Palmyra B, I got explosive light, so whenever I pick up an orb of light, it stacks up to 6, and my next 6 shots will have more damage and more blast radius, which is just super because, as I said before, this build just resolves around picking up orbs of light. So, as you've seen in the background already, I'm just showing you strike gameplay all the time. So, this is how the build functions. I just love it, it's just great to play. It's just awesome because I can help my teammates, I can just be invisible myself if I need to. I have a lot of burst damage, and I even have a lot of DPS with my weapons so yeah this is the two builds i like to show you today and that will be it for this video so guardian if you like this video leave a comment leave a like and we will see each other next video